This is Cameron Chai from azom.com and I'm speaking to Dr. Dan Pereira from the University of New South Wales and he's going to tell us about geopolymers. How are you today, Dan? Oh, I'm very well, thank you. It's a very nice conference here, enjoying. Good to hear. So Dan, what are geopolymers? Geopolymers are inorganic polymers with uh, silicon and aluminium as base structure with oxygen uh, from network and they are very similar to polymers in the sense that uh, they form networks but important thing is they are not organic that means it can reach higher temperatures and it doesn't get burnt like normal organic polymers so that's the main advantage of them and, and how sorry and how does one make a geopolymer you, see, you need a aluminosilicate source such as heated clay or waste materials such as flash and you react those with a highly alkali solution and they set like a cement and you can cast it whatever shape or form you want and it's cured at room temperature or just a little bit higher like 40 degrees or 60 degrees centigrade for a few hours and they don't require long periods like ordinary pot and cement to set. So they're, they're reasonably cheap to produce and, and, the, and the process is quite simple or well, as in the casting to produce a shape? Uh, it's a very simple process. Casting is very sim simple and similar to the ordinary pot and cement but uh, the cost would depend on your raw materials. Mm -hmm. How much the clay is or normally the Fly ash, for example, if you were going to make large bulk samples, fly ash is a waste product. It is generally cheap, but then it transport costs would come in as well, where you're transporting it. And its cost co comparison really depends on your locality and where you're going to manufacture. And how long, have this, how long has geopolymer technology been around? When was it first discovered that, that you could make these, these inorganic polymers? Well, according to some people, it was the time that the pyramids were made. <laughs> <laughs> they believed that some of the pyramids were cast in a similar to a geopolymer material. And if you look at the old Roman uh, buildings, they are also geopolymer type materials. So they've lasted over 2,000 years. But the real interest came within the, about 30 years ago when Professor Davidovitz looked at these materials starting with uh, potassium based materials rather than uh, calcium based materials that have been in place for long and very recently people are looking at these geopolymers for other applications like ceramic applications high temperature ceramics bio, bio ceramics electronic ceramics and it opens up a whole wide range because it's a silicon aluminium, oxygen, which you can add other substitute, other inorganic uh, elements into this material. So are there actually any commercial applications that are utilizing geopolymer technology at the moment? Well, there are niche applications in uh, similar to concrete, uh, where uh, concretes are used, like uh, where it's been attacked by acids, because this is highly acid resistant, and geopolymers take that place and also fire resistance. There are fire resistant panels in uh, some of the cruise ships made out of geopolymers and also in uh, some of the boards made for certain buildings where there is fire resistance required. And what's your specific interest in geopolymers? What, what area are you working on? Well, I've been looking at uh, putting hazardous waste and nuclear waste into geopolymers over the last five years but now we're looking at for the application, advanced ceramic applications like putting in geopolymer coatings onto metals like steel or other materials and because they stick to steel and so that you have a protection, high temperature protection onto metals and you can go to very high temperatures above 1700 degrees C. And have you been having much success with these to date? Oh, these are really very experimental stages, it's a long way to go. All right, well, hopefully we'll be able to report back in, a, in maybe 12 months' time with, uh, with some more developments on that particular front. Yes, sure, we hope so. All right, Dan, thanks very much for your time. Thank you.